Hey, what's going on, folks? It's Mike here, and welcome to the next lesson in our D programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to continue talking about functions. But today in this lesson, I want to talk about what exactly happens when you call a function. So I'm going to talk about things like the call stack, call sites, and activation contacts, and some of these terms that maybe you intuitively understand, but I want to take some time to go ahead and draw them out. It's going to be important for us because D is a systems programming language, and we want to understand exactly what's going on as we move further in this series. So with that said, let's go ahead and talk about what happens when you call a function. Now, what I'm going to display to you today is maybe something you've seen in other languages. In fact, if you've seen my other series on C and C++ programming, I've likely talked about this. But again, I want to talk about this in the context of D, just so you have continuation, or in case D is your first programming language. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just write a function here. So let's go ahead and add one. Uh, I'll just call ahead and call it um, addition plus one. And we'll take in some parameters, int a, b. And our return type will just be another integer. And what we'll do is return a plus b. Uh, and we'll just go ahead and add 1 here. Now, I'm writing this in a somewhat slight weirdly way here. Um, but you'll sort of have to understand this with what exactly is going on with the function. So let's just go ahead and um, go ahead and uh, run this program here. I'll go ahead and write out some result. And in this result, let's go ahead and call our function here, addition plus 1, 4, and 5. And that's going to add 4 plus 5 plus 1 together. OK, now let's go ahead and test this out here. So I've got our program, and we get 10 here. So perfect. OK, now what exactly is going on here, though, when I make this function call? Well, there's a few things here. The very first thing that we need to know is that main is the very first function that we call. Now, how does our compiler sort of keep track of this? And what's happening when we call addition plus one and jump and start executing this code? How do we get back here so that we know to write out the result? Those are the types of things that we want to sort of build a mental model for. And for this, we have a abstraction, or at least a way that we can think about it, which is known as the program stack. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and draw this diagram here. And this is called our program stack. And basically what this represents is a program. This actual source code gets compiled into some binary or while it's running, we could sort of represent this. Now this program stack is broken up into different sections. For example, there's a dot text section, which in parentheses, I'll just put source code. There's other sections like dot data, which we might have statically initialized data and these types of things. But what I really want to talk about is these other segments here, one that we have called the heap, which we're going to revisit later, and the important one for today, which I'm just going to draw here with some space here, called the stack. Now, this is not to be confused with program stack here, but the actual call stack here. So I'll go ahead and put in parentheses call stack. Now, what exactly is this keeping track of? Well, our actual function calls, meaning our very first function that was called was main when we entered the program here, right? We called main, and then we eventually call some other function, and then we eventually proceed on with our program. Now, this stack here that I'm going to draw is growing downwards. So let me go ahead and just represent it this way. So I call main, and then I'll call our addition function here. And then when I'm done with this addition function, I actually pop it off this stack here. So I can delete it and get rid of it and then call our next function, which would be right line, which I'll go ahead and write here. And then I proceed here. And then when I finish writing out uh, the line, I get rid of it. And then, of course, uh, by the time I reach line 15 here and I'm out of my main function, well, I pop out the main function as well. So that's the idea with this call stack. And I'll go ahead and give a note here, call stack grows down here. And we have a way to sort of keep track of the top of our stack here, which is what's known as a stack pointer. OK, so I'll just go ahead and illustrate that there. And that's how we know where do we jump back to or which function, the actual address of this function. And for now, you can just kind of label these uh, with some address. I'm just going to say this is n here. And we have the value, you know, zero down here. Oftentimes we'll write it in binary, maybe some representation like this with however many uh, 
bit system you have. Uh, I'll just use eight zeros so you sort of get the idea, maybe dot, 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 um, so you can see it there. But that's the general idea of what happens here. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this addition plus one function, because that was kind of interesting. So again, when I'm writing my program here, we start from main, that's at the top of our stack, and then I call addition plus one. So let's go ahead and just write this out, and I'll put it back in here, addition. Now, when I call this function here, and let me actually just write it out, addition, there's other information being passed into this function on our call stack like the variables and the return type and the locals. So this is our sort of call site here where we're calling a new function. And then we jump to this function here in our actual code. And then I get copies of these variables here. So these would be um, my parameters. I have my local variables here, which I also need to store, which are valid within this scope of this curly brace here on line three and this curly brace on line six, and then my return value and ultimately my return address. That means how do I get back to line 10 in this case? So what's really happening here when you call a function is you're storing your local variables. So I'll just go ahead and write out uh, one here. There it is. And then we have our return address. So how do I get back to uh, line 10 here, which I'll just represent in hexadecimal as uh, 10 here, which is zero A. Uh, I'm just going to use the line number here to represent that. And then, of course, I have our parameters here, A and B. So that's all the information that's stored here in what's called the activation context. So every time I call this function, I'm storing this information. Again, my return address, any local variables that get initialized here, uh, and any of the parameters as well. So that's the sort of general idea of what happens when you call a function. So again, if I call this function again, then uh, you know the same process happens. And when I return from this function, that's sort of the computer's way of saying, okay, I'm returning, I've got the result I need. Now I can pop off and get rid of this activation context. So I'll get rid of it here and remove all of our functions here and go back to wherever our return address was, line 10 and resume execution from line 11 in this case. So that's a general idea of what's happening when you call a function in the deep programming language. Now, depending on your operating system, the arrangement of some of these things like the locals, return address, parameters, and so on might be uh, different orders. That's just sort of a, a detail that you'll have to find out if you want to see uh, for sure. Uh, but in the next lesson, I'll show you how to actually print out the address of these variables so you can figure out where you are and that'll give you your convention uh, in that sense. So again, just to summarize what happens or the way to think about this mental model is every time when you call a function, even if it's main where you're starting from, you create something called an activation context, or in other words, a frame or a call frame, for instance. So that's the different things that have to be created whenever you call a function. And then of course, that means copying the parameters if you have any. Any local variables need to be stored in this stack memory here uh, that I'll just highlight in general. And then of course a return address so you know how to get back to where you were executing your code previously. And that's the general idea. That's how things work. Now in general, and this is something that we haven't touched on in particular in this series, you can see why whenever we create a new scope with these curly braces, that this variable here essentially is part of this stack here, it's a local variable, and it gets sort of popped off or thrown off this stack when you leave this scope. So that's just another way that you can think of the curly braces and what again is happening and where this actual information is being stored in the stack. Now, we'll have to talk about the stack a little bit more in some other lessons when we talk about this other part of memory here called the heap, which allows us to store lots of variables and for us to have a little bit more control over how long that actual information lives, meaning it's not automatically popped off the stack for us. So again, we don't have to do anything whenever we call a function, meaning the 
uh, moving or copying of these variables in any way. That's handled by the compiler for us, uh, how that's arranged. All right, folks. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope it gave you just a little bit more of a systemsy insight. Again, this might be a new topic for you, but I think it's an important thing to understand as you dive deeper into your programming language, some of these different semantics, because we're going to be talking about some of the semantics soon with functions as we continue on in the series. So I want you to be prepared. So with that said, go ahead and ask some questions in the comment section. If you have any, make sure you like this if you found it was useful or otherwise, I just want to thank you for your time and attention and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.